Hey guys, it's Nico from Outdoors Anonymous. In today's video, we're going to talk about my main hunting rifle. This is my Savage Axis XP. It's chambered in 308. It's the rifle that I use mainly for hunting. I call it my bush gun. And we're also going to talk about what is the best distance to zero your hunting rifle. Or at least I'll show you guys what I have mine zeroed in for. And I'll explain to you why I have it zeroed in at that particular distance. So first we're going to take a quick look at the gun over here. I've owned this gun for just a little over two years now and I've taken it on a few hunts already. I've gotten two deer over the past two years with this thing uh, and one bear over the past two years with this thing. So it's safe to say that this rifle so far has served me pretty well. Now when I first bought this thing two years ago, I made a video showing my initial thoughts and my initial review of this rifle. And that video has been one of, if not the most, viewed video on my channel thus far so I figured hey we're pretty overdue for a two-year ownership review of this rifle. First I'll show you guys a closer look at this thing. So when I bought this thing I bought it new at Cabela's and it came as a ready to hunt package meaning it came with the scope rings and it came with this uh, it's a it's just a weaver weaver scope right there. So the scope that it came with is a three to nine it's a pretty basic low-end type of scope. It doesn't have any hash marks on the reticles or anything like that. Uh, it's just straight crosshairs and that's it. As a basic hunting rifle, it it works. It's uh, It doesn't have to be anything fancy for the scope. It's chambered in 308 and uh, yeah, it's the uh, True Timber Strata camo on this thing. The sling, it didn't come with it. I bought the sling separately. Um, and yeah, that's... Uh, that's about it. So out of the box, it comes with a scope, the scope rings, and the gun. So it's a pretty much a ready to hunt package. All I did was I put the sling on it. Uh, it's just a basic Cabela's leather sling because it is a hunting rifle. So I like to have it slung over my back like that when I'm walking through the bush. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty good gun. In my, in my last video, in my last review video that I did of this, uh, there was, I was saying something about the bolt being hard to run and um, later on I learned that that's just because as a savage um, what actually happens is when you put the bolt up like that that cocks the firing pin so that's why it's a little bit tight when you're putting it up like that now the firing pin is cocked you run your bolt and you're ready to go once I broke the rifle in though and uh, you know clean gave it a good cleaning put some lubricant on there it runs just fine and I have no issues with that any longer. Now just to show you guys something real quick here in case you're wondering how to remove the bolt on the Savage Axis, you do have to pull the trigger in order to do that. So you have to have it on fire. It's not gonna come out if it's on safe. So you set it on fire, you make sure it's empty. Make sure you take your magazine out, make sure that's empty. Run it a couple times just to double, triple check right there. And there's this little button over here that you have to press along with the trigger before you can take the bolt out. So you keep your thumb down on this, press, you pull back on the trigger and the bolt just slides right out. And to put that bolt back in, same thing, you gotta press the trigger and press this little button right up here as well. So you press trigger, press that button and the bolt slides back in. Once you release that, the bolt gets locked in there and it doesn't slide back out. So as I was saying, I've taken this gun out on a few different hunts now. Um, and I'm actually gonna link the videos to those hunts in the description of this video below. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, the buck that I shot last year with this thing, it was a pretty crazy shot. Uh, the buck was coming in from 200 yards and he was running in and he was coming in hot and he was running fast and I seen him coming in from 200 yards from the bush line and he was trying to run across the open field pulled it out had my monopod on me I put a good lead in front of him little bit of a holdover and then BAM running shot and he dropped right on the spot make sure you guys check that video out after you watch this one and I'm gonna link that and I'm gonna link that video in the description below so you make sure you check that video out after. So let's talk about what distance I have this rifle zeroed in for. Initially, I did have it zeroed for 100 yards, 
but I actually switched that over and I'm now zeroed to 200 yards or sometimes it's called the 50 slash 200 yard zero. The farthest animal that I've ever shot so far was like 268 yards or something like that. And that wasn't even with this rifle, that was with my Remington 700 and 6.5 Creedmoor. So I'm a lot more confident shooting longer range with that rifle. I can take, a, I've taken that rifle out to about 800 yards, but that's like more of a precision rifle. This is mainly a hunting rifle. So on that point, you don't really have to shoot a dime every single time. So the reason why I have it zero for 200 yards is because I found 200 yards gives me the best maximum point blank range for the distances that I usually hunt, which, which like I said, is usually within that 200 yards. Now when I say point blank range, I don't mean like right there, right in front of the rifle. What that means when you say point blank range is any distance where you can basically point and shoot and given your ballistics, it's gonna hit within a certain margin of error. So for example, if I'm hunting within 200 yards and I'm hunting, uh, say like deer or whatever, right? Usually it's deer. Um, a deer's vitals is about eight to 10 inches. So it's about something like this. It's about the size of a pie plate, right? So if you're, if you're zeroed in at 100 yards, yeah, you're going to be shooting flat out to 100 yards. And then that bullet is gonna start dropping and dropping and dropping. And by the time you're at like 200 yards or whatever, just for example sake, say you're holding over by like nine inches. You don't wanna be doing that. So I wanna be able to just point, line up the crosshair right in the middle of the target and then shoot and then it's gonna hit anywhere within that pie plate. So I'm actually gonna pull out the ballistics here and I'm gonna show you guys in the video somewhere over here what that looks like. Okay, so taking a look at the ballistic chart over here, you punch in your information right there, right? So it's it's a 308, it's 150 grain, the muzzle velocity 28, 54 FPS. Now that's just the muzzle velocity that it said on the box and I'm shooting a Federal Fusion 150 grain. You punch in your uh, ballistic coefficient, again that's on the box or you can find that online. Sight height, 2 inches. Now usually for a hunting rifle your sight height is going to be 1.9 or 2 inches around there. Make sure you get that correctly. If you're shooting an AR, usually the sight height is about 2.7 inches, sometimes 3. Um, then you punch in your zero range. So I have punched in 200 yards over here. So taking a look at the chart. So if I'm zeroed in at 200 yards, um, if you take a look at uh, 100 yards right there, 100 yards says you're gonna be shooting about an inch and a half high. So say a deer pops out at 100 yards. Can you line your crosshairs directly at the vitals of that deer and hit it in the vitals for a kill shot? If it's 1.5 inches higher than where you're aiming, that's still a kill shot because if a deer's vitals is about 8 to 10 inches like this and you aim right in the middle, well it's still going to hit right there and that's still a kill shot. So you've got basically room. If a deer's vitals say is 8 inches, then you've got 4 inches of room going high and you've got 4 inches of room going low where that is basically your maximum point blank range. You can just aim directly right there in the middle and you're gonna hit within that pie plate of eight to 10 inches. At 50 yards, uh, you're gonna be about 0.3 inches high. So that's why it's called a 50 to 200 yard zero because when you're zeroed in at 200 yards, you're basically zeroed in at 50 yards. So basically anywhere within 200 yards, you're gonna be shooting within less than two inches. Okay, at 125, uh, 125 yards, you're 1.7 inches high. That's the highest that it goes. Um, that's, that's the highest that the bullet will go within 200 yards. Now, when you start pushing out past 200 yards, at 225, the bullet's gonna start dropping now. Because remember, the bullet goes, starts going up like this, and then it starts falling down. As you can see from the chart, it's a pretty flat shooting trajectory right now when you're zeroed at 200 yards for this 308. Um, so 225 yards, the bullet's gonna hit low at 1.2 inches. And at 250 yards, the bullet is gonna hit 2.9 inches low from where you're aiming. Is that still within that eight inch, 10 inch pie plate? Is that still within the deer's vitals? 100% it is. At 275 yards, that's when it starts getting a little bit tricky for this particular bullet, because now you're hitting 4.9 inches low compared to where you're aiming. 
you might miss at that point so you might want to start holding over now at that point but like I said because most of the animals that I shoot is within 200 yards I'm good to just point and shoot this thing at anything that comes out within 200 yards and that is why I have this thing zeroed for 200 because for example I'll change this now to 100 yards to show you guys what it looks like if I'm zeroed in at 100 yards all right so here it is if we're zeroed in at 100 yards yeah you're basically pointing and shooting anywhere within 150 yards and then at 175 yards you're 1.7 inches low not bad 200 yards you're three inches low still not bad you're still within the vitals it could still work uh, 225 you're 4.6 inches low 250 yards you're 6.7 inches low and then the bullet just starts dropping okay so that's why I have it zeroed at 200 because I don't mind if it hits a little bit high I don't have to hit the exact point of where I'm aiming every time this is not my precision rifle I'm not using this rifle for PRS this is my bush gun this is my hunting rifle so as long as I can point at an animal that I'm hunting, shoot and hit it in the vitals, I'm good with the way that this rifle is shooting. Now if it was a PRS rifle or a precision rifle or I'm target shooting and you want to hit like a quarter MOA, it's not going to happen with this rifle, okay? It's a 20 inch barrel, it doesn't have a, I don't have a, I don't have a bipod on here, it's not a heavy barrel. Um, it's it's not in a chassis it's just in a regular stock right it's not built for precision i don't expect to hit you know i don't have to shoot even an, even one moa i don't need to shoot one moa with this thing as long as i am able to hit the vitals of the animal at the distance that i usually hunt within which is 200 yards in my in my case then in my opinion this rifle is good to go so as a quick recap guys, zero your rifle for what you're going to be using it for. I'm using this thing as a hunting rifle, so I have it zeroed in at 200 yards because that's my hunting distance. Now, when you want to determine what distance you should zero your rifle for, you might not hunt within the same distances as I do. You might live out in the west and you might be shooting longer range. Um, in that case, you might want to pick up a completely different rifle altogether. Um, you might be living in a in an area where there's thicker bush and you might only be hunting within 50 yards or 100 yards zero that at 100 yards but if you want to determine what distance you should zero your rifle at grab a ballistic calculator and uh, I use SBC Lite or SBC Pro ballistic calculator you can use any ballistic calculator there's, there's lots of different types of ballistic calculator apps out there right you just punch in your data it's all science anyways right so doesn't really matter what ballistic calculator you use grab a ballistic calculator punch in your ballistic data on there of the ammo that you're shooting and then figure out what your ballistics look like at different ranges and play around with the different zeros and figure out your maximum point blank range for what you're going to be shooting your rifle in whether it's a hunting rifle or a precision rifle this is a hunting rifle I need it for quick reaction shots so maybe a deer runs out somewhere I gotta pick it up real quick I just gotta point that crosshair at the vitals and shoot and I can expect that deer to go down if I'm not screwing up my shot with manual error right it's not set up as a precision rifle no muscle brake it's not a heavy barrel it's not in a chassis it doesn't have a bipod um, the scope on it is not a precision rifle scope I'm not shooting this thing for precision doesn't matter if I am over one M away with my grouping I'm not gonna be too picky with the way that this rifle groups as I am with the way that my Remington 700 uh, PCR and 6.5 Creedmoor groups because that one I shoot target for precision so that one I expect to be less than one MOA for my groupings for this one as long as I'm hitting that vital of a deer or a bear or whatever I'm hunting which is pretty much an 8 or 10 inch uh, circle it's like a pie plate right as long as I'm hitting within that this rifle is set up for mobility and quick reaction shots. That's why I've got the sling on it. That's why it's lightweight. And I'm good with this rifle. So having said that, I've got some steel set out downrange over there. Now the steel that I have are either 8 inch or 10 inch gongs. And I've also got like a little uh, silhouette target 
out that way as well and I think that one is a 12 inch. So what I'll do is I'll shoot this steel at different distances over here whether it's uh, 100 yards, uh, 150 yards, I'll go all the way down there for a 200 yard shot and I'll show you guys that that steel will be hit because that's a 10 inch steel. So if I just aim directly in the center of that thing with the crosshairs, I'm gonna hit that steel. I don't care if it hits an, an inch or two high or an inch or two low because if I aim directly at the middle of that steel, it's a 10 inch diameter steel, I'm gonna hit that piece of steel. All right, so let's get set up and let's get shooting. All right, here we are. So the white, white gong, that's a 10 inch gong. And that one is at uh, 108 yards. And then the orange Ipsic and the yellow gong are both at um, 153 yards. So just like in a hunting scenario, you're never gonna be at an exact 150 or 100 yards or exact 200 yards or something like that. So it's gonna be a little bit off. Another reason why you wanna just zero for your maximum point blank range, like what I'm talking about. All right, so we'll go for the white gong here first, and then we'll go for the other two at 153 yards. And unless I screw this up, shooter error, um, it should hit because it's gonna be within that uh, maximum point blank range distance, right? So the only, only way I would ever miss a shot is if I'm the one that screws it up. Not the gun, not the bullet, but me, if I screw it up. I'm also shooting off of a tripod here um, to simulate, like you're not always gonna be prone in a super stable position, right? You're gonna be shooting off of a bipod or maybe you're just, maybe you don't even have your tripod with you or your shooting stick or whatever and you just sit down and you shoot off of your knees like this. So you want to simulate stuff like that. So I'm shooting off of this tripod here as if I have like maybe a branch or something like that that I can rest my rifle on. All right, so let's get started here. We'll go with the uh, white target there at uh, 100, 108 yards here first. Perfect. And that would have hit about uh, an inch and a half high, according to the ballistics. So we'll move over and we'll go for the uh, orange chipsick. Okay, we'll go for the yellow gong. There we go. And I shot it off. <laughs> All right, we'll go one more shot here. We'll go for the orange gypsy again at 153 yards. All right, so We've shifted back now to about 200 yards, we're at like 198 yards uh, right over here. You can see, you can see the targets all the way back there. I'm going to shoot the orange chipsick one there again because the yellow gong kind of fell off 12 inches, 10 inches, whatever. It's uh, same difference. All right, we'll get set up here. There we go. A couple more. Try a couple different ways to hold the gun to see which one is the most stable. I just did it like this with my uh, with my non-shooting hand, kind of supporting the buttstock. Now I'm gonna try to put my non my uh, non-shooting hand up here.
kind of pull that to the right you guys could probably see that impact there all right so i mean there we have it guys that is the savage axis xp mine is chambered in 308 they come in different calibers as well um do i still recommend the rifle after two years of ownership well yes i do the reason being is i forgot to mention earlier in the video but i picked this rifle up for under 400 bucks or yeah i think it was either 400 but i think it came with a 50 dollars mail-in rebate so it was like 350 um for the scope scope rings and the rifle so it's basically a ready to hunt package right there i mean for around 400 bucks for a ready to hunt package like this you can't go wrong with that it's um it's effective for what it's used for again i want to emphasize that it's not a precision rifle and it, and it's not what i use it for so i'm not concerned with shooting dime sized groups with this thing at 100 yards or 200 yards or whatever i'm just concerned with is this thing going to hit the animal that I'm hunting in the vitals and um, as you guys could see from the shots here it will and if you guys check out the hunting videos that I have of this gun which again I'll link in the description below make sure you guys check those videos out and you guys can see this thing in action for what I actually use it for so do I still recommend this rifle after two years of ownership I absolutely do it's a perfect gun for beginners or people that want to get into hunting um, and pick up their first rifle without having to burn a hole in their wallet. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a thumbs up on the video. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you guys zero your rifles in for and why. If you guys enjoy this type of content, hit that subscribe button as well. And stay tuned for more awesome content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.